Did you actually vote while you were in Russia? Did you vote for like absentee mail in? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I voted from. Um, I think I voted in both the '96 and 2000 elections from there. Yeah. So, um, but you know that that's an interesting thing too because I'm, um, you know, I, I remember how rigorous the absentee ballot process was, and um, I'm just now having to learn. One of the things I'm going to start working on is, um, the, you know, election security because I know it's going to be so controversial no matter what happens in November. Totally. That I think every journalist needs to know all the laws and um, mechanics, and, even. Yeah. And, the, and, and mechanics, because we don't, frankly. I mean, one interesting uh, we, place to look, just like to the extent you're taking an interest in that, is actually Puerto Rico. It's a mm. U.S. territory. They actually have single day voting, make Election Day a holiday. They have a lot of levels of protections. Like, I think in some of this, often when you go to the sites, they make you uh, put your finger in a die such that if you go to another site to know that you didn't vote in that same, on that same day. Oh, that's interesting. Places. And one of the things, so I, I picked this up when I traveled there earlier this year and met with a lot of leaders locally just to understand how things work. And one of the biggest takeaways is, even for people who say, oh, this concern about election integrity is overblown. What I'll wait for is what is the best counter argument to, in a moment where there's at least a loss of public trust, to at least taking certain basic steps that would shore up public trust. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something to be said for a case for ritual. A, for actually what the ritual accomplishes. I mean, it's not like we're not asking people to, I don't know, do cartwheels and, and take, you know, foot showers before they vote. We're asking them to show their ID, which relates to the act of voting. But I think having it as a national holiday and a ritual that you go through almost creates a greater sense of civic duty and commitment. It's also something that enhances the public trust itself. Like even if, for those who, I'm not one of them, but even for those who would argue that it doesn't improve the actual integrity of the results by that much. At a moment of doubt, why not take a unifying, non-controversial step? And then, you know, take every increment you can. It's something so important that you might as well want it to be as accurate as you possibly could want. That, to me, I think is uh, as much the question of the solidarity we get in moving past what otherwise is a very risky issue, is public concern and trust in elections, that I'm open to the best arguments for the other side, but I haven't yet heard them in terms of moving to single day voting on election day, make it a national holiday, make government issued ID a requirement to vote. And you know, I think if we ever got there, I certainly would commit for my part to be as loud of a voice as I could to the Republican base or any, and any other that we are done complaining about concerns about election integrity if we get to that if we get to that place where we say we've taken the steps that one reasonably can to be confident are you in favor of um automatic voter registration like i'm uh, not actually mm -hmm. i think that mm -hmm. i think that there's something to be said for the civic act of going through the process of you know largely for practical reasons because then you can be registered in multiple places puerto rico does not have that either so it's a good case study of puerto rico i think that I am in favor of de-bureaucratizing anything that does not actually help the ultimate act of knowing whether the right person voted in the right place. I don't want an mm -hmm. iota more of bureaucracy than is required to achieve that goal, but I want enough verification to know that the person who's actually voting is voting in one place is alive and is indeed the person who shows up at the ballot and is a citizen of this country. I, I actually... Um, I actually come around to being in favor of English as the sole language that appears on a ballot as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are deep discussions to be had of saying that, look, if we require, like think of what we require of an immigrant, a legal immigrant before they can cast a ballot. You could have paid millions of dollars in taxes sitting in Silicon Valley or elsewhere. You're still not able to cast a ballot legally until you have taken an oath of loyalty to the United States of America and passed a civics test that says you know the first thing about what's going on in the United States of America. And I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's crazy to talk about whether these should be basic requirements to graduate from high school in the country to become a full citizen in, in the United States either. And so I think that that would unite the country, actually. And I do think that the revival of like civic ritual, even a day where we say that this is the day where we carry out our civic duty and then attach all of the integrity enhancing components, not as like box checking exercises for just technical confidence in the results, 
but actually even a unifying civic ritual that brings us together. I think there's an opportunity to do both of those things at once. And uh, I don't think it's as far out of reach as we make it out to be.